I'm at Nova Scotia Arctic Char, and now you don't normally think of a fish farm being maybe within the city limits of Churro, but this one is inland in the Churro area, and I'm here with David Roberts, who's the guy in charge of all this. So tell me about Nova Scotia Arctic Char and how this whole operation started, I guess. Well, Heidi, Nova Scotia Arctic Char is what you said it is. It's a land-based fish farm, and what that means is we basically grow fish independent of the coast or really independent of any other water body other than our well that we have on site. Yeah. So it came to pass that the Millbrook First Nation was interested of course in getting into commercial fishing as we all know about and part of their fishing strategy was to get into aquaculture. Now it's a bit loud in here so yeah. why is it kind of loud in here? Well there are a lot of uh, uh, equipment and moving water if you look at around us here, we have fish tanks, yep. and in the back behind us, we have a big blue wall. Right. Behind that is all our filtration equipment. Aww. And if you want to envision your aquarium at home, a little plastic box that sits out the back, that's what it is. Oh, okay. That's the plastic, that's box. plastic box. This is the aquarium, <laughs> and the water goes round and round. And how many fish are here? We have in total now about, uh, approximately about 100,000 fish wow. on site. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. And okay, I've noticed like these guys here, they're a bit active. Yep. Like they're, they're popping up they're, and stuff. What's with that? They're coming up. These are a different strain of char. They're all Arctic char in here, but we've got a couple different strains. And they like to come to the surface oh. when they feed and also to grab some oxygen sometimes. Oh. These fish here right. are more yeah, subdued really and still. down and in the water column. Hmm, so yeah. it just depends on what type of Arctic yeah, char behavioral, they are. Behavioral differences yeah. and uh, domestication. The genetics of char is still fairly wild compared to salmon and trout, which we're all familiar with on the yeah. marketplace. And what's happened is salmon has gone through the gamut of production, through domestication, and now it's generally a commodity. Mm. And so farmers and other fish producers are going back to see what other alternate species can be produced, and char is one of those up-and-coming mm. species. I hate to mention this with all yes. the char in the room, but yes. what do they taste like? Well, I often tell people, you know, and they ask me that very same question, what do char taste yeah. like? Because everybody's eating salmon and trout, and, so, and they're, they're related to those fish, but uh, uh, a little distant cousins, I guess mm -hmm. we call them. Mm -hmm. I tell people, if you like salmon, don't eat char, because if you eat this char, you'll never eat salmon again. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so char beats char salmon. Char is, it does. Um, and it's not just me. I mean, I'm biased, of course. But uh, a lot of people will tell you, it's a very delectable food. It's got a finer texture, a sweeter taste, and it's served in all the finest white tablecloth restaurants in the major urban centers that we can get to. Well, I should get closer to the fish, I guess. Yeah, let's go have a look. <laughs> I guess I need some waterproof <laughs> yep, type we'll suit gear. You up. We'll get that on. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I've got, I've got my gear on, the latest uh, fashion in uh, fish The finest fish fisher wear. folk wear you could find. <laughs> yes. So we're going to feed some of these chars. These lovely so char, yep. This hungry. is the food. This is a commercial uh, fish pellet. Yeah. Uh, that is common to... Uh, a lot of uh, land-based fish farms yeah. and sea cages as well. Hmm, okay. Uh, generally, uh, we do a little bit of hand feeding, which is what we're going to do now. Yeah. But uh, because of the way the char like to be fed, we usually use automated feeders. Why do you need to feed them that way, though? You, you said yeah. there's something special about the way they like to eat? Well, yes, you can feed them by hand, yeah. you know, but the, the optimum ration for a char is to take its daily meal requirement and divide it into a hundred different diet, not different meals. Oh, okay. Which is difficult to get people to do yeah, yeah, on a exactly. regular basis. So we have automated feeders that do that for us, and it broadcasts the feed out over the tank. And one of the benefits of broadcasting the feed is that char are very social in their structure. Hmm. They are they like to aggregate together, which allows them to be stocked in higher densities in the tanks. Right. But because of that, there's a pecking order oh. within the group of fish. So if I stood here all day and dropped pellets into the tank, the larger fish would eat first, and then they'd get full, but then they would then guard the fish feed that falls to the bottom so the smaller fish really? wouldn't get any. Yeah. So we want to break that down by broadcasting the feed over a larger area as well as over more frequent feeding time. To make sure nobody's and talked Make sure everybody gets a chance to get some, some feed. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, but so. we're going to do a little hand feeding now. Yeah, so basically so just grab a bit and just grab a bit and spray it out like you're throwing confetti on them, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're all getting married Yay. here. Oh, great. <laughs> Ooh, I got one. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> We're not fishing, are we? So how many fish are in this tank alone, do you think? There's about uh, 8,500 oh, fish 8,500 fish? Yeah. 
That's a lot. And are these young guys or? Yep, they're yeah. only, uh, they're probably from, from the time they hatched. <laughs> they're about uh, a little over a year old. Interesting, all right, so what else do you have for me well, to do here? Let's go down I to the bigger the guys, fish? have a look at them. Isn't that job? a beauty? Oh, he's huge. Is it yeah. he or she or does it matter? Well, that uh, doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so if I wanted to actually touch the fish, can one do that? You want to pick him up? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> of course, I say that now. They don't the, bite. They don't bite? No. Okay. But don't put your finger in their mouth. No, okay. <laughs> so, but, okay. But I can pick him up. I'm not going to hurt him or anything? No, okay. no. I'm, oh, it's okay. Oh, they're really slow. How do you grab that? Okay, you hold this. I have such respect for fishermen okay. because I don't, that's really tough to do. Yeah, it is tough. Oh, there's a there's trick separate. to it? Okay. Well, oh, look. Oh. See, there's the free. And this is the expert. Right. Oh, look at that. Hello. Wow. Neat. How did you do that? Oh, you got it by the tail. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, look. Gloves. Yeah. You put those on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Fish oil. And it'll be a little good, easier. Good to... for your skin. Yes. Come here. Oh, look at the nice red. Oh, that is easier. Yeah. There we go. Right on. Ooh, Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. All right, back you go. <laughs> All right. Okay, Dave, thank you so much for My showing pleasure. me around uh, Nova, Scotia, Nova Scotia Arctic Char and help, letting me help out at fish farming. Oh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. My pleasure. If there's anything you want to see on Living East, you can always write us. Our address is at Box 3000, Halifax, Nova Scotia, B3J3E9. You can also email us <laughs> at livingeast at cbc.ca. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Great. Back you go.